We left off with the question, what is a nod? Now, I need a nod from you. So let's take a very simple question. If I say it in Gaelic, let's try it. An will mehr chasav chahav spechli. Nothing happens. Am I wearing glasses? I got one nod. Any more nods? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> uh, I wasn't wearing glasses, I was wearing frames. But I got you to nod. Now our, our topic is nod data. And it, it is almost the problem of philosophy. And I want to spell it out a little bit. Obviously we're not going to cover the problem of philosophy in one night this and the next section more or less are the problem of philosophy. A few pointers and then we leave it aside. But this first zone is very important because we're dealing with yes. What happens when I say yes? And our three weeks tonight, next week and the week after, we're dealing with the yes of fact now, the yes of Normal belief, yes, I, I will follow those directions. And the yes of faith, yes, my Redeemer liveth, or whatever religion you're in. And they're all associated with nods. It's a very spontaneous human gesture. I'm not saying it's, it's universal. I, I'm saying the 13 elements are universal. I sometimes talk about a Turk I met in a train in Germany. And uh, you find that the, when a Turk does that, he's saying no. <laughs> but uh, let's stick with the Western civilization. Uh, nodding is, is associated with yes saying. Now, I got you to nod that I had glasses. I got you to do something even though you were mistaken. And we can be mistaken. And I'll get back to the glasses when we get to the third point, all my eye. But our important problem is, is to ask, what goes on when I nod? Now, if you're following the course, you'll say, oh yeah, he, he's getting back to these seven steps. When I nod, I'm expressing yes. And then, that's no, and then, don't know. Okay, what's the data on nodding? The behaviorist who says that observation is the basis of studying human beings will say, well, nodding is nodding. And this is one of the reasons why this is not a topic. This is not a visible activity. How do you get at this? Remember our, our research on Helen. How do you research the emergence of language? By reflecting on your own consciousness, okay? We're right back in the beginning of the first class. How do you find out what a mind is? Remember I said, suppose I, I, I started to say, we're going to discuss dogs in this course. And I said, dogs are five-legged animals, six-legged animals. You'd say, no way. Now, if I say a mind is something that works logically, you should be able to say, if you're still alive, well, I don't work logically. Okay, how many of you don't work logically? Yeah? You work intuitively, as you would say. I live intuitively. Okay, how do, you, how do you find out what a mind is? You've got one. 
It's a, a dog, okay, you've got a dog, you can count the legs. A mind, you've got a mind. And it's the only mind available to you. Now, does that make sense? Read my mind. No, you can't. <laughs> Read my lips, as a famous politician used to say. <laughs> okay. So, mind is something you have, and you can check this out. I'm claiming that when you nod, you have actually gone through this. And, and, and we do it regularly pretty well. The case with this, the spectacles is a, an instance of how you can be tricked. This may be a holograph. Yeah? We may be on, what deck is it on Star Trek? Yeah. Okay, that marvelous TV show where they have neither churches nor toilets. <laughs> okay, so nodding. What is nodding? Now, I, I want to help you to notice the problem of a lot of philosophy by posing the question. The, 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 the problem of philosophy comes out in a certain way, in, in another tradition, not the one I represent. And, and it comes out with the question, two questions. The standard question, is nodding certain? Okay. Now, it's usually posed as, is knowing certain? I was going to bring in a textbook that I use as illustration. You'll find it in the library, Roderick Chisholm. C-H-I-S-H-O-L-M. And it's Theory of Knowledge. It's a paperback. It's well known. It has been used as a textbook regularly throughout the States. And in that book, Theory of Knowledge, that's the question he, he has, except it's, is knowledge certain? Okay. Is knowledge certain? And that... That haunts the, book, the whole book, chapter by chapter. I, am I certain? I, I recall sitting in a lecture in, in Oxford University and the professor, a man called Strawson, was talking about being certain that there's a brown bear in the corner. It was always very funny that uh, he starts off with, with something that isn't there anyway. Now, suppose there's a brown bear in the corner. Well, am I sure there's a brown bear in the corner? Well, well uh, I see a brown bear, <laughs> I have a brown perception, and, and eventually, well, uh, what am I sure of? <laughs> sort of a vague, br I have a br vague brown impression. Okay, now, th this is a bit like, mind your gnu. <laughs> I, I drew this picture. <laughs> These are good news. <laughs> okay. Is knowledge certain? It's a bit like going on safari in Africa to shoot a new gaga. What's the obvious question? What's a new gaga? Okay. But in fact, this is the dominant question since Descartes in philosophy, and it goes much further back. Is knowledge certain? The real question is, and I keep both. What is knowing or nodding? Nodding makes it much more concrete. What is nodding? Well, nodding is that. Yeah, but what is nodding? So the question that we are asking here is, what is knowing? Now, again, back to the, the, the issue of it's not in the culture. This is not part of the present culture of philosophic studies. This is much more the question. The question of, am I certain? And the real issue is, well, what do you mean by knowledge? And how do you answer that? Find out what you normally do when you say, I know. 
and, and that's very important as we move to discuss uh, religious topics. Let's clear up the problem of dogs before we get on to the problem of God. Yeah? It's, it's okay to start with the, the topic, I know that my Redeemer liveth. But the question must come up, what do you mean by know? When, when I know that my dog liveth. <laughs> okay, so what do we mean by know? What do we mean by nodding? Now, let's, let's get back to our puzzles and, and see, can we nod? <laughs> Okay, we're in the land of nod, and we want to get back to find what's behind nodding, what's, what grounds nodding. And we're simply doing some exercises to notice that, yeah, yeah, this is what we do. Now, you've got these puzzles in section 2.5. As I mentioned, we're, we're really in chapter 1 of process. But the exercises in section 2.5 are the center to the book. If you don't do those exercises, we're like a, a group studying swimming on dry land. You've got to not only do the exercises, but notice what you're doing when you're doing the exercises. Fair enough? And I know some of you in, in TV land are having great fun with these. You can really liven up a party with the problem of digging a hole. Or the problem of this marvelous number. Okay, there's a number. Now that's a special number. It's a special number for English people. How many of you know why it's special for English people? Don't say it out loud. Yeah? It's not special for a Hindu. It's special for English people. Now, there's a problem about this number that it, it, it may not be special for all the English people. For instance, that number there could be shifted so that you get another special number for English people. And this moves over to here, OK? And it ends with 2. And that would be special. Now, I, I, I know that I've got you stuck, haven't I? And many of you are, are discomforted, wondering, oh, what's special about this? Yeah? And you want a clue, and you haven't got a clue. And my effort is to give you a clue. You can see the number. And if your, your pet chimpanzee was here, she or he could see it. Yeah? I've got some of you interested. Why is this a special number? And I'm teasing you. The, the beginning of our course was teasing. And some people don't like being teased. Well, God said, would you give us the answer and get on with the course? No, I want you to notice that I can liven you up to make, be interested. And you're trying to discover what is, what's special. And then you've got to check it out and then nod. Now, I, I might say it's special to Englishmen because uh, it has been estimated that since the death of Queen Victoria, the number of... <laughs> now, that wouldn't be good enough. Well, since the death of Nelson, <laughs> somebody has tarted up all the English people, and this is the number. Yeah? Not much good, eh? No, every, every na nation has a special number, and it hasn't to do with population. It has to do with the way they talk, okay? That may help somebody. For instance, the way the Germans talk, uh, the special number for a German ends in two. For a French person, the special number is one. Now, that doesn't help either, does it? Still, if you think of the fact that for a German, two is zwei. Yeah? 
That's the way German says two. Now that might help. <laughs> it mightn't. How are we doing? Okay, now notice what we're doing here. We're not just doing a puzzle. We're noticing something about us. That something brings up our interest and we, we, we normally want to catch on. Let's, let's put the drive down in words. Does an answer exist? I, I could be fooling you, yeah? I just wrote that number down, actually. There's a, nothing, yeah? And many of you were trying to believe me that uh, this is special to you, yeah? You were, you were weren't you, honestly? <laughs> I can't, these, these plausible Irish men, honestly. Okay, does an answer exist? We want to know what happens to you when you're in this frame of minding, yeah? And this, this is the basic question in a certain sense. Does an answer exist? Remember when I talked about the A, B, C, D, E, F, and you've got the ups and downs of life? And does an answer exist? And there's a way in which uh, you can push that and find that you put in a new word instead of an answer. Does God exist? And now you see the importance of, of finding out, what do I mean by nodding? If by exist you mean, or, then this is nonsense. Does God exist? See the importance of, of finding out what goes on when I do this? And what do I mean by exist? I mean that I end up saying yes. Hmm? And uh, we've got to clear that up before we talk about God. That by exist you do not mean smell, taste, touch, etc. You mean that you nod. Uh -huh. Is there inflation? Uh -huh. <laughs> How do you know there's inflation? You, you all nodded, yeah, there's inflation. How do you know? By doing some arithmetic, the economists will say you go out last month with your basket, get your basket of goods, get the prices up the cans, go to the same store this month, make sure you're not buying the specials, etc. <laughs> Add up the prices, subtract one from the other, and you find, oh, wow. <laughs> or in, if you're lazy, you can just, you know, use the same $20 bill. And the second time round, you'll find that you, not only have you no change, but you need more. <laughs> but is there inflation? You nod, but, but you didn't look somewhere. You add it up, you did some thinking, you did some figuring. And when you say yes, it's intelligence, it's understanding. So what do you mean by yes? What do you mean by nodding? What do you mean by exist? You mean, I did this properly. There are no glasses in those frames. So you've got to do it properly. And, and knowing the way I trick around, you should have been cautious. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you expect there's an answer. And again, as with the previous puzzle, what do I do to help you? Zwei. That's the last letter in the alphabet, isn't it? OK, we leave that puzzle. <laughs> you didn't expect me to give you the answer, did you? You've all weak, haven't you? 
<laughs> okay, it's a, special, it's a special number for English people, honestly. And uh, you think about the way English people talk. Okay. Starts with eight and ends with zero. Okay? <laughs> oh, come on. All right, let's take this puzzle. I know you're going to say this is more mathematics. Yeah? It's a very simple puzzle. That's actually true. Isn't that fair? You can verify that, can't you? That's 25. And you add those two up and you get 25. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? Anyone willing to nod? Oh, come on. There's no trick here. Yeah? Huh, it's okay. Now, would it be true if I put in n, 1 plus 2 plus 3, dot, 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 out to n minus 1, plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, up to n. Yeah? What do you think? Looks good, doesn't it? Now, can I help you? That's the problem of the teacher. What does the teacher do? Changes the diagram, sets it up for you so that it stares you in the face. I'm pretty well quoting Aristotle. What do I do? Well, very simply, instead of writing it out like that, let's take the first one. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 Okay. And then you take 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay. So we take it the other way around. 5. How am I doing? Yeah. 4. <laughs> oh, am I lost? 3. <laughs> Two, one. How am I doing? Are you excited? <laughs> okay, so that's one plus two plus three plus four, and that's one plus two plus three plus four plus five. And that's 5 squared. Yeah? Do you see it? Yeah? Inside? Yeah? Isn't it exciting? <laughs> and from the diagram you see, well, it doesn't matter how big you make this, you can split the square that way. OK? <laughs> well, don't be in a hurry. Take your time. But it illustrates a very basic thing from Aristotle. Remember our theorem of the first day? How do you get understanding? You get a decent diagram. You get the person to set it up properly. You get a good story. Yeah? Who is my neighbor? Yeah? You don't get a, a little definition. You get a very good story, a good Samaritan, and a question. And then you might get the insight. Okay, and, and you can nod. So we had this, that's equal to 5 squared. I raise the question, could it be true for n? I get you to puzzle, and eventually, and maybe you haven't got there yet, you're able to say, well, is it true for n? And you're not believing me. This is you understanding. Okay, you're able to say, that's true for n. Mm -hmm. uh, how are we on that? Yeah? Sandy? Did I completely understand something before you could really say, see it? Seeing and uh, no, no, you don't need complete understanding. In fact, we'll have that in the next life. But you have to have enough understanding. Uh, 
to go on with. Uh, our, our jump here to yes is always tentative. Is this building safe? Yeah, it's, it's pretty new. Is Seton Academic safe? Ah, oh, well, now. <laughs> we're, we're propping up the, the center of it, you know. <laughs> OK, I, I had a student once who lived in Dartmouth, and she told me that she always approached the bridge hesitantly. I think she was haunted by the, the story of the Indian who cursed the bridge, you know. Is the bridge safe? Well, I'll try it this evening. <laughs> so we, we have, in human life, you have to say yes to get on. Yeah? Is, is the weather going to be cold tomorrow? Well, yes. Are you absolutely sure? No. Absolute certainty is a very remote thing for human beings. So you have enough understanding. Uh, to go on with. See, in the case of friendship, or, or mates, husbands, wives, etc., uh, you, you don't understand. The great thing about serious relationship is that not only do you not understand, but you come to appreciate that you don't understand at all. Yeah? That it's two mysteries. And yet you have to say yes. Yes, I, I, I'm coming to tea, yeah? I, and you find yourself in cycle three. <laughs> Does that help? So it's very tentative. Yeah? You, you get enough understanding to be going on with. Now, the difficulty is that when in serious situations, like, say, in, in therapy, or in medicine, or in the economy, Sometimes the effort isn't made to get a decent understanding. I, I mentioned the case last week of the, the L ISLM curves and their use in, in economics pretty well since before the uh, Second World War. And uh, it, it doesn't try to understand the rhythms of the economy of capital investment, of consumer goods, and the way they oscillate. It's a very simple solution that doesn't work. So, the, so there is that danger that the human tendency is to make do with less understanding than you need. Uh, so patchwork. But uh, we, we do what we can. You have a, a, enough understanding to be going on with. And when you get to say, am I going to marry Joe? Yeah? Well, do you understand Joe? Well, no, not, not yet, but I, I made sure to visit his parents. <laughs> and that's part of this, you know, what am I going to do? Yeah? Joe asks the question, well, <laughs> invite me home till I see what you're going to look like in 30 years' time. <laughs> And I may not like what I see. <laughs> OK, any, any more stray questions? So that's why I take these little puzzles that there's a way in which, yeah, it's all here on the blackboard. Let's take another one of these, which helps to illustrate Another aspect of this, I think it's number six in the book. And I think this is the, the list of words confirmed, crowned, dignified, excellent, Fortunate. I, yeah? Is that the list I have in the, in the book? Yeah. Now, what's the odd word out? What's the, the word that doesn't fit in? OK. Now, notice th this isn't mathematical, and some of you are, are relaxed. Yeah, thanks be to God, he's, he's got away from these. Yeah. 
this is a sort of a sane, a sane sort of a puzzle, sane conundrum. I'm thinking of, of uh, Jane Austen's Emma and, and them gathering conundrums. It's in Book 11 of Volume 1. Yeah. You can gather conundrums and do these exercises endlessly. But what we're trying to discover is us. And the first thing to notice is that you, you are not chimpanzees. That you, you may have 20-20 vision, but there's something else going on. What? What's the odd word? And you need an insight. A anyone going to give me yeah, a suggestion? Yeah? Confirmed? Is it for the same reason that, that I, I put it there? Go <laughs> tell, tell us, yeah? Look at there's two C's. Where there's Very two good, C's. yeah. yeah. How many of you noticed that? That, that? that confirmed is an odd word because you've got C, D, E, F. Okay? <laughs> Great, yes. That's the <coughs> one I enjoy because a lot of people don't notice it. <laughs> That's terrific, yeah? There's a capital letter here. It's, it's, it's the odd word out. But because it's the front of the line, people don't notice it. Now, uh, notice that you nodded. Yeah? And you nodded because you did this. You saw this occurred to you, it's a puzzle, and perhaps it's the first puzzle you've been interested in because it's not mathematical. And, yeah, uh, a capital letter, two C's, is, is that right on? Now, I shouldn't have to tell you. Yeah? When you said capital letter, I, I think the person next to you said that couldn't be it, yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but what I'm pointing to here is that you have to discover and say yes yourself. Uh, that's fair enough. And, and you know, you don't understand everything, that was your point. But you are confident, en confident enough to say, yeah, that's an answer. Yeah? That is odd because there are two C's, and, and that's my answer, and I don't care what you think, okay? That's important. And similarly, you two at the back, you, you each got a different solution, but there are others, uh, and I'm not going to go on with them, but you can have a great fun seeing how many answers are there. But you actually say, yeah. Now, why is that important? And, and I can see I, I'm certainly not going to go into the crossword puzzle, which I love getting into. Maybe I'll, I'll just... <laughs> Many of you have tried that crossword. Anyone get it out? It's terrible, isn't it? I love making out these crosswords. Uh, and you know that it is a crossword. It, it, it's sort of a, a cross mounted on, on a hammer. <laughs> You've got a hammer away at it, and it's really a cross. Okay, now, why am I drawing your attention to you getting at a fact? This is not belief. Okay, it's a simple puzzle, and you can come up with an answer. And if some of you write in to me, don't write in and ask, is this right? You, you figure out that, yeah, because of number of letters, the way they're structured, syllables, yeah? <laughs> Any more suggestions? But the point is, you discover a fact. Now, it, it, the, the value of this is that it's not an area where you need a lot of background of belief. You're not trusting anyone. If you ask, is the bridge safe? Uh, you may have to believe the architects, or the people who built the bridge, or, yeah? You, you, you get your, your car checked, and the chap comes out and you say, are, are the brakes OK? Uh, well, you, you don't know for a fact that the brakes are OK until <laughs> you find yourself going down the hill and nothing's happening. They're speeding up. 
But in these cases, you can do the, do the whole thing yourself. You start with the puzzle, you think it out, you make a jump, and if you notice in the puzzle, I ask you to think about the word abstract. What do you mean by abstract? And again, I, I'm contrasting here. What do you mean by abstract? Aristotle, Thomas Aquinas mean you add. It's not taking away. The normal view is you leave out. That's very abstract. Many of you know that phrase. Well, that's very abstract. Abstract is when you really hit on the essential. You enrich, and it's creative. Uh, two C's, capital letter, the other answers, they're not here. You, you add. Isn't that fair enough? You, you add by a little work, yeah? Yeah. You could take out excellent because it's the only one that starts with an E. A vowel. A vowel. A vowel, yeah. You could take out fortunate because it's the only word that does not end with a tall letter. Okay, and immediately you can notice another reason for taking out fortunate. Can't you? Can't you? Can't you? It's the only one that ends with a vowel. Yeah. <laughs> We're making progress. Now keep it up. When you get the whole 50 answers, <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Yeah? It's actually fun being human if you were only allowed to be human, which is part of our problem here. Okay, now why am I pushing this about fact? Because what we're dealing with here is the possibility of you having a fact. A fact about you. Okay? Uh, and let's spell it out. That's a puzzle, okay? Finding the me, the, the way that I am, that me am, okay. That's what we're talking about in this course. There's me. <laughs> and if you like, you know, like the good news, and we're talking about religion. Put on a little halo. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and the question is, what's me? OK? Can you see the parallel? That's a puzzle on the blackboard, and I asked you to puzzle about it. There's a puzzle sitting here, sitting at home. And what I'm trying to do is raise the question, What's me? And it would take a lot more work, I think. I'm trying to stop you waiting for an answer. Or even looking at the blackboard and saying, that's a very interesting theory. Uh, how does it compare to Immanuel Kant? OK, I'm trying to stop you doing that. I'm trying to get it away from academic conversation and back into this zone. So just as here we've got an indication that makes you puzzled, so you have sitting there, I don't imagine many of you out there are standing up at this. Maybe you're pacing up and down. Uh, a puzzle. The puzzle that is me. What? What am I? And the effort has been to get you to get an insight into you, me, Emma, Emma on the beach, Emma in the kitchen, Emma in conversation, Emma running a school, Emma teaching a class, Emma sitting in class. And to discover one possible view of you. OK? Now, we had different answers here. Somebody might come up with an answer that, in fact, they're all polysyllabic. There's more than one syllable in all these words except 
crowned. Very good. We're, we're making progress now. You only need 43 more to get. <laughs> OK, now here, yeah, me. What is me? There are a whole lot of funny views on what you are. I want you to find out from yourself, from thinking about yourselves, what you are. I suggest, well, I'm suggesting this diagram. I'm suggesting that if you work hard enough, you'll find out that, yeah, let's, let's sketch them in a little bit so as to show the, the, the setup. And let's just think of the first seven. I'm suggesting that you're something with sense and what questions? And just as with this simple puzzle, you can come up with your own view. Is. Is me like this? OK. And at some stage, I hope, and again, your question is very relevant, do you need to understand thoroughly? No, heavens, at this stage, after three weeks, what understanding do you have of this? Again, think of music, yeah? You learn the notes from C to C, but can you play the piano? How are you on Strauss's Blue Danube? Yeah? How are you on Mahler's First Symphony? Wow, I can barely get my thumb under my, yeah? I'm playing C scale, and it takes weeks to do the do, do, do. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. Many of you learned the piano and found that you really wanted to go on up with the five fingers and then da 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 da. <laughs> okay. So, no, we, 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 we aren't advanced, but there's a sense in which you have enough understanding to be able to say, well, am I really like this? And to make that jump. An inner yes and an outer nod. Yeah? How, how are we doing? Yeah? So that's, that's our empirical work for these first five lectures. We're in the sixth lecture now. And it's a lot of work for six classes to actually come up with a suspicion so that you're actually nodding. You're, you're not looking to me for an answer. You, you notice yourself that I'm like that. And if you try and talk your way out of it, you'll find that you're stuck in it. Imagine one of you saying at the moment, but I don't ask questions, do I? Does that make sense? So it's, it's an investigation of oneself, it's empirical. You're finding something out about your own mind. And the suspicion is that it's like this, diagrammed out like this. Now let me offer you another view, OK? And it will help you. It's like having a puzzle and two answers. And I give you a simple way of remembering the two views. I mentioned earlier two ways of posing the question about knowledge. Is knowledge certain? Or what is knowledge? The traditional way is, is knowledge certain? And you spend endless hours trying to prove if the tree in the forest falls, hmm? so on. The real strategy is to ask, well, what exactly do you mean by knowing? Now, the two answers, one is in the tradition. Uh, it, it's so much in the tradition that the title of British philosophy in the early part of this century was Conceptual Analysis. It 
it was still alive and well in the 60s. It has shifted, and I, I, I like to suspect it's because they found out they had no concepts, <laughs> it has shifted to the title Linguistic Analysis. Something like this is the dominant mode of philosophy in a lot of North American universities. Uh, a particular person that uh, I knew did research on the Department of Philosophy in Toronto and found of that of the department, 90% were practicing this type of stuff. Okay, what's the view of mind here? Uh, this is somewhat of a caricature, but it, it helps. You have a mind, think of David Hume, and what happens? Well, you look around at the things you meet, you look at a tree, and you get, some way, you get a concept of a tree. You'll see why I'm writing it this way shortly. You get a concept of a tree. It's not terribly clear, but you have a concept of a tree and you have a name of a tree. Uh, and since it's not terribly clear, you'd like to clarify it and you clarify it by analyzing it. Okay? And you see immediately CA, conceptual analysis. Okay? That's one view on your minds. The other view on your minds is that you have a mind and, with a bit of effort, depending on how badly you've been educated, you can be made interested in your experience, sense, etc. And you can get insights and from the insights, you get concepts. Okay, that's the sequence. Now, instead of the question and insight, just a handy way of remembering it, you think of ah experiences. You have a mind, what happens to you? Ah? Ah! Okay, so. So there's the Mac view, and there's the, what I call the MacAlpine view. <laughs> Apologies to the MacAlpines. <laughs> uh, why do I put in MacAlpine? MacAlpine I, I know of as originally a, a Scott, Scott road contractor, manufacturer, or whatever. Uh, there's a song in Glasgow called MacAlpine's Fusiliers the Irish who were working on the road. <laughs> okay, why do I call it MacAlpine? Because the, the basic modern origin of this view comes from a man called Scotus. Now, I'm not going into the history of this question. Scotus died, I think, around 1306. Scotus denied the events in sight. This is the view of Thomas Aquinas, who died 1274. Now, is that relevant to you? No. Only insofar as you may be interested in finding out where did this view, where, where did this view come from in education, in economics, in psychology, in philosophy? It, it comes from a medieval thinker. Or, well, a medieval, let's say. <laughs> but it's not really relevant. What's relevant, and again we're back to this question of the puzzle, what's relevant is you ask yourselves about your mind. You discover which is your mind. And it doesn't matter who agreed with you. You agree with yourself. Does that make sense? You have a view then. You have a right to a view, as I bring out in the afterword of the book. 
you have a view on your own mind and you can say, I don't care what David Hume says or Kant says or McShane says or Lonergan says, my mind works this way. And my children mind, children's mind work that way. Yeah? But, but you have to discover that fact. And it's a terrific discovery. That makes sense? Okay, a fact about mind. And that's, that's what this puzzling is about. Each puzzle offers you a possibility of reflecting on how you did the puzzle and finding out that, yeah, that's how I got the concept of uh, straight up, round down, or 50 odd solutions to this puzzle or why that number is special to English people. Yeah. Do write in and tell me why you think it's special. <laughs> okay. Now our next, our next job, well really I'm only going to introduce you to the problem of chapter five of Wealth of Self. It's the problem about which I, I quote, I think, on page 90 and maybe on page 111. I use the same quotation about Tertullian and St. Augustine, that it took him 10 years to get out of this problem. What's the problem? The problem is that here we are again, the diagram in Wealth of Self. Let's just take fact, the yes of true judgment. Within you there is what's called a sensitive integration. Seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, kinesthesia. And it's inside. Now, if I had my other glassless spectacles on, I could have fun here, but that sensibility that is inside seems to be outside. Okay? I, I am short-sighted. <laughs> when I had the other glasses on, you were all fuzzy. Okay? Can you appreciate that? Yeah? When you put on your glasses now, yeah? Unless they're reading, unless they're playing, you just wear them for, to look learned, is that it? They're just plain glass. <laughs> it, it changes what's round about, doesn't it? Now, what, what does it change? When I put on my glasses, I change what's behind the lens, okay? And when I move them up and down, oh, wow, you're all going up and down. No, you're not. What's going up and down? The image. Where does the image appear? Out there. Okay, so that, that's not the real room. Now, I, I'm going to leave you to work on that chapter. Uh, don't panic. It's a very difficult question. It took me seven years, and I'm only relatively slow. And it's wonderful to come across a problem that y you know you're not going to solve. I can put it in terms of a famous story by Plato, Plato's Cave, that is popular, but I don't need to get into it. But it's an experimental effort through this week, which is very shocking. That that is, and I'm waving my hand out into the room, out, reaching out into television space. Uh, that's not the real room. What, what's the real room? The real room is the one that you say yes about, yeah? that you, you, you nod about. And, and it is a startling discovery to find that this has been accepted by you since you were small as being out, outside. Now, we'll do a little bit more about that the next day, but it's a huge problem. We didn't get on to the last point at all. What is the way that I am? 
but it brings us right back to pages 34 to 37, before you get to section 3. What is the way that I am? And you can think of Molly Bloom and Paul Lee, double that, two people talking to each other, using these elements. And the problem brought out on those pages is that the two people may not be using these elements properly. They are not keeping each other alive. They may say to each other, you look wonderful tonight. But what do you mean by wonder? Is there any wonder left? Uh, our problem, as I said in the beginning, is to keep this concrete. This is about real human beings who have this talent. And the problem in culture is that it is oppressed. We talk about the reach of sense and so on. I'll leave you with that.